So hi everybody, so first I would like to thank the organizer to invite me because I'm not working on nanomedicine, but I think my mission today is to try to convince you that the cancer stem cell concept is changing the way to treat cancer and uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, nanomedicine have to play an important role in uh, designing new therapeutic strategy to target cancer stem cells. So uh, first I would like to show you this picture. This is a picture of a breast tumor staying for estrogen receptor expression and as you can see what is very striking is the cellular heterogeneity you have cells oh, sorry you have cells that are positive for estrogen receptor and cells that are, that are negative for estrogen receptor and this is true for different biomarkers so the question that you want to ask when you see the cellular heterogeneity is if all the cells are have the same uh, tumorigenic activity um, the same capability to form metastasis or to resist to treatment so if i try to modelize this cellular heterogeneity you can imagine two different models. The first one is all the cells are equally tumorigenic. In another world, if you isolate one cell from this uh, uh, tumor bulk, uh, this cell will be able to generate a new tumor. If it's true, what you want to do is to be sure that you want to eradicate all the cancer cell population <coughs> to be sure to achieve a true cure of cancer. Another hypothesis would be that not all the cells are equally tumorigenic. Some cells are tumorigenic, and some cells are not tumorigenic. So if it's the case, the tumorigenic cell population have to generate all the non-tumorigenic cells of the bulk tumor. And the, the other point is that the tumorigenic cell population have to self renew to keep the tumorigenic activity in the tumor bulk. So if this hypothesis is true, you want to be sure to target specifically the tumorigenic cancer cell population to achieve a, a true cure of cancer. So, to, to see which uh, model is uh, driving the tumorigenicity inside the tumor, you can do a simple test. So you can do xenografting of primary tumor in mice. So you sort the cell based on a biomarker, and uh, if uh, both uh, subpopulations are able to generate the tumor, you can say that maybe uh, it's, uh, all the cells are equally tumorigenic. However, if uh, the sorted cells are not all able to generate the tumor, for example, only the ones that express this biomarker are generating tumor, then you can say that maybe you have a subpopulation that is a tumorigenic population. And more importantly, you have to see if this uh, uh, tumorigenic cell are able to regenerate the non-tumorigenic cell population. So this is a cancer stem cell concept. And this tumorigenic cell, we call it uh, cancer stem cell. So to try to see if we have this kind of organization in tumor, we have used a simple assay that we call aldefluorase, that is uh, used to uh, uh, isolate the cells that have uh, high enzymatic activity for the alveolar dehydrogenase. So this test was used to uh, isolate the hematopoietic stem cell and we have used it in breast tumor. So we have, some, uh, we have used a xenograft model of cell line and we have sold the cell with the high enzymatic activity that we call aldefluor positive from the cell that have not this enzymatic activity that we call aldefluor negative. So as you can see in most of the tumor, the aldefluor positive population is very small, about 5 to 10 percent. But when we do injection in not skid mice uh, of the aldefluor positive and negative population, you can see that only the aldefluor positive population is able to grow. Even if you inject 500 cells, you have a tumor. However, if you inject 50,000 uh, aldefluor negative cells, you have no tumor that is growing. The second thing that we have done is to inject intracardiolic uh, the sorted cell population, <coughs> the aldefluor positive and negative population, and we have followed metastasis formation by bioluminescence. And as you can see, only the aldefluor positive population is able to generate metastasis in the mice. Interestingly, we can also follow in situ the expression of this enzyme, LDH1, using an antibody. And uh, when we look at tumor, we can see that tumors that uh, have LDH1 positive cells are worse prognosis than the ones that do not have this uh, LDH1 positive cells. So all these experiments show very nicely that the aldefluor positive population contains the tumorigenic population, the metastatic one, and can predict the prognosis in, in tumor. So we can, we can say that this aldefluor positive population contains the cancer stem cell population. So now that we have a biomarker, we can follow the role of this cancer stem cell population along the carcinogenesis from the initiation to the formation of metastasis. So we have done several studies on the initiation, so I'm not going to talk about this today. I'm going to talk about what we have done to improve the treatment of the cancer. So uh, the one thing that we have to know 
at the beginning, when this cancer stem cell concept was uh, emerged, people said that maybe the cancer stem cell population can resist to conventional therapies and give rise to the relapse. But now there are several studies that show very nicely that it is true. After conventional therapies, such as chemotherapy or radiotherapy, this cancer stem cell population resists and give rise to the relapse. So this is very important to try to uh, identify therapeutic target that uh, targets specifically this population uh, to, to eradicate uh, uh, cancer. So the strategy that we follow in the lab is to use uh, cells from cell line, primary tumor or xenograft, sort the cell based on this aldefluor assay to, and compare the cancer stem cell uh, gene expression signature to the uh, mature cells try to identify potential therapeutic target, and uh, uh, after use drug or different uh, uh, therapeutic strategy uh, and uh, see if, we, if it's working directly in animals using primary tumor xenograph. So we have done one study on cell line, on H cell line. We have separated the aldefluor positive and aldefluor negative population, and we have uh, uh, establish the gene expression signature. We have far, found about 400 genes that was uh, significantly, significantly uh, uh, differentially expressed between the cancer stem cell and the mature cancer cells. So among the genes that are regulated in the aliflor positive population, we found different genes that have already been shown to have a role in stem cell biology and in the genes upregulated in the aliflor negative, genes involved in differentiation and apoptosis. But because our aim was to try to find a potential therapeutic target uh, against uh, cancer stem cell, we are focused on CXR1 that was uh, upregulated in aldefluor positive population. So this is very interesting because CXR1 is the IL8 receptor, and uh, it was shown that uh, this gene was involved in uh, proliferation and invasion of the cancer cells. And very importantly, there was already a drug designed against CXR1. This drug is Repertaxin that is used uh, uh, to prevent uh, neutrophil inflammation uh, in the heart after a heart attack. So our idea was to use this Repertaxin to see if we can target directly the cancer stem cell population. So we have used primary tumor xenograft. We have injected mice, wait until it's about four millimeters and start the treatment with reprotaxin, and uh, we have uh, tracked the tumor size and the percentage of cancer stem cell. So this is the result. So if you can see, uh, compared to the control, the mice treated with reprotaxin, there are no effect on the tumor size. But this is not very surprising, because when you think about it, if, it, if the reprotaxin is really targeting the cancer stem cell population, uh, we are targeting only 5 to 10 percent of the tumor bulk, right? So you should not have an effect on, on the tumor size. So this is very important because when you design clinical trial, people are always looking at the tumor size, but maybe if we are targeting the tumor, tumor genetic population, we will not see effect on the tumor size. <coughs> However, if we look at the floor positive population, we can see that reprotexin targets specifically this cancer stem cell population. And this is true when you do the combination with uh, conventional therapies such as uh, docetaxel. However, docetaxel alone has no effect on the cancer stem cell population. Even more, you have an increase of the cancer stem cell population as it was uh, suggested by, by the previous slides. Now, the more important thing was to see if we have really targeted this uh, tumorigenic population. So what we have done is re-implantation of the residual cells uh, isolated from uh, treated tumor in new mice. And as you can see, the uh, cells isolated from uh, reprotexin treated tumor or reprotexin plus docetaxel can, are not able to generate new tumor. So this shows very nicely that we can target the tumorigenic population specifically and, uh, 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 and inhibit the uh, relapse. So now I'm going to show you just to finish a study that was done not by my group but by the group of Jeff Rosen in Baylor College because this is the only study that I found on breast cancer stem cell and nanomedicine just to show you that we can target directly the breast cancer stem cell population using nanomedicine. So they have used the same strategy as you, we used, uh, as they use primary tumor uh, xenotransplantation and to treatment with eye radiation or eye radiation plus gold nanoshell to induce hyperthermia and look at the tumor size and the percentage of cancer stem cell. So as you can see, <coughs> irradiation or irradiation plus hyperthermia has an effect on the tumor size. However, if we look at the percentage of cancer stem cell, 
the high radiation alone induces a, a, a huge increase of the cancer stem cell population. However, high radiation plus hyperthermia reduces significantly the cancer stem cell population. So this is very encouraging uh, and show you that we can use um, nanomedicine uh, therapeutic strategy design to target specifically this population. So I would like to, to finish by thanking the people that work with me and also our collaborator at the University of Michigan, the group of my <coughs> Thanks.